Hi everyone, and welcome to Nonstop Income for Coaches. We'll just be starting up in a moment, but so you understand, we're going to go through this full presentation for you, and we'll be following it with Q&A on a phone call. And below the screen, you should just below the webinar itself, you should see information on the on the Q&A. Don't call it now. I'll show you when to call it as we get through the presentation. So are you ready? And we're just going to start up now. Hi, I'm Aaron Woolley, and I'd like to introduce my good friend, James I. Bond. And yes, that's his real name. James is one of the top consultants in the nation who's worked extensively with both businesses and individuals. I think you're going to find the information he shares with you today unique and highly valuable. James is a specialist in consumer behavior and behavioral management. He's also an expert in the business disciplines of marketing, management, and strategic planning. Early in his career, James ran a boutique advertising agency in Canada with Fortune 500 clients, as well as dozens of smaller businesses. Then, for 13 years, he ran one of the West Coast's most prestigious training and behavioral management firms, employing both PhDs in psychology and organizational development and consultants from many of the nation's top consulting companies. His clients included some of the largest companies in the world, including the biotech giant Amgen, Gannett Media, Tenet Healthcare, British GE, and others. But he didn't just work with large companies, hundreds of mid-size and smaller firms, and literally thousands of individuals have benefited from his unique and powerful methods. His specialty was improving a person's ability to achieve their goals. By focusing simultaneously on both business and personal goals, his methods became revolutionary and powerfully effective. James has also been a workshop chairman for SCORE, the resource partner for the U.S. Small Business Administration. He continues to run workshops for SCORE while helping dozens of clients every year as a senior marketing and internet marketing counselor. Still, one of his proudest achievements was the founding of the Father-Daughter Project, dedicated to helping improve the relationships between fathers and daughters. Here to give you some valuable tips you can use right now to generate even more income for yourself and your clients, my friend, 007, James Bond. Thank you, Aaron. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our, our webinar today. Did you ever notice that some people seem to make a ton of money in business while everyone else is struggling or just getting by? Well, would you like to learn what they do differently, whether they realize it or not? I'm going to take you through that today in our webinar as I explain to you some powerful secrets that many people don't realize. And once they realize this, they suddenly find themselves uh, able to dramatically increase their business. Now, if you have a coaching business, a consulting business, or otherwise, if you're an expert, there are three ways to boost your income. You get more clients or patients, you get more income per client, or you get longer relationships with those clients. One of the mistakes that many people make is they ask the question, how do I get clients? And that's the wrong question to ask. The real question is, how do I get a flow of clients? And that's what I want to talk with you about today. What you want to do is you want to turn on the faucet so you get a flow of clients. And I'm going to show you a really powerful and yet simple way to generate nonstop income, to create a flow of clients. What I'm going to show you by analogy is to how to position the bucket to catch the rainfall. How to position the bucket to catch the rainfall of clients. Now, it's a term I call channel redirects. And channel redi redirects is where you access clusters of clients to generate a continuous flow of income for yourself. To catch a rainfall, think of the analogy now. To catch a rainfall, you go where the rainfall is, and then you position your bucket so you can catch uh, part of the rainfall. And let me start with this area. Making money isn't terrible. It gives you freedom. It gives you the ability to help more people. And here are some examples. Also gives you an opportunity to have some fun and really have some of the better things in life. Brett is someone that I work with for uh, three years. 
and early on as his business became really successful he was able to have fun and actually do helicopter snowboarding in the Andes where they actually a helicopter takes you to the top and then you do snowboarding down these pristine mountains I didn't even know people do that it was really quite amazing then he was able to have uh, when Led Zeppelin had their reunion concert in London he was able to get third row seats let me tell you it's nice to have money Bill is a really good friend of mine and now he's a member of the hundred country club where he is he and his wife are visiting a hundred company countries around the world Lauren well she took her parents to Maui then she went back to work for three weeks and then took her boyfriend to New York City to watch the Yankees play her favorite their favorite Dodgers it's nice to have money and uh, myself I started the father-daughter project which is really close to my heart and wrote a book called the secret life of fathers where I interviewed 101 fathers of daughters something that was really close to my heart and made my daughters proud of me uh, for what I was doing it was really wonderful so what about you how was last year financially how was last year for you emotionally how was last year for you did it work out the way you hoped for this year what are your goals and what would you love to accomplish in the next few years if you could accomplish just about anything you wanted so the real question is what's the life you really want and I want you to think about this I, this was told to me early on we often don't give ourselves permission to have the life that we deserve have the life that we can get and I want you to think about giving yourself permission to have the life you want where would you go what would you do what life would you have but the real secret uh, particularly for people who own businesses is to not be a prisoner to have the freedom to build the business you want to be successful in the business you want but not to be a slave to the business now these are some real people Joe is a psychologist he's absolutely incredible and incredibly successful he's able to turn away patients he gets to be very selective something that many psychologists don't get to do because he has so many patients that he has more patients he that he can deal with himself personally so he's actually hired other therapists he has 24 therapists now working for him he has three offices and get this he has 125 brand new patients walking in the door every month so many in fact that he can be uh, selective now remember that's on top of the regular patients he already sees or his people already see and in some cases with a therapist it can be for three four or five years that you have a patient so getting all his regular patients plus 125 new referrals every month you know is just is just phenomenal but gives him freedom our own business was a management consulting company a leadership management associates of California and we had 22 consultants and coaches and uh, but Lauren has a very different situation she prefers to work alone she doesn't want the headaches of working with people what I'm going to show you applies to both types of businesses and both types of ambitions now this is a unique webinar I'm going to show you a few simple strategies and it's a lot easier to most people realize it usually takes a little twist in how you're operating your business to suddenly have things take off completely but not doing what everyone else does now how did I learn this before I take you through this I mean, why should you even you know where did I get this knowledge from early in my career I ran an advertising agency where we served large companies like Kraft Timex Avon Seagram's Abbott Laboratories etc and then my dad came to me and asked me if I could help him market his business and I totally screwed up and I recognize that marketing for a small business is dramatically different from marketing for a large business and all the stuff they teach you in school and all the webinars and seminars and everything else tend to focus on large business tools and techniques and methods but for a small business you don't have money to experiment and so there have to be there I learned that there have to be a few things that you do that you know are gonna work and so I spent over six years learning and understanding small business and then I had a breakthrough then I came across Kinko's photocopy centers and Kinko's has a whole story of his own uh, he had small uh, 
photocopy shops, uh, a small photocopy shop across the street from UC Santa Barbara. And his story is phenomenal in many ways, but many dramatic ways that affect virtually every business. Basically, it's a low-tech business. He had a photocopy machine that he rented, that he leased from Xerox. Anybody could have done that if they had uh, just a few dollars. He basically he went to US, uh, USC, University of Southern California, and his girlfriend was going to UC Santa Barbara, so he opened up a shop across the street from UC Santa Barbara, so it would give him uh, a reason to go up there and visit his girlfriend. It was a tiny shop, 10 by 10 feet. If you can imagine this, I'm six feet tall, so 10 by 10 feet is tiny. This was a low business, and yet he had a low-tech business. He was not the lowest price, and yet he made nothing but money. And it's, it got me to understand first conceptually that a bit, your business has three parts. It has the concept of what the business is, then the mechanics or the meat of what the business is, and then application of the stuff that you actually apply. And most training programs and marketing programs focus on the mechanics. How do you get customers? You do this and that and the four Ps of product, price, place, promotion, and all this stuff, but they don't really focus enough on the concept of what you're doing. And what Paul Orfelia, the founder of Kinko's, did was his concept was slightly different from everybody else, and that helped him accelerate his, uh, his business just tremendously. If you have a bad, mediocre, bad or mediocre concept, the mechanics don't matter. There are tons of people who have photocopy businesses, and I know one specifically who is actually located near uh, Kinko's, uh, near uh, their headquarters, who actually went out of business and yet followed all the procedures that they teach you in school and everything else. And it's so simple that Paul Arfelia, the founder of Kinko's, his biggest fear was once he realized how to bring in droves of customers, he he tried it again and that it, it he got tons of customers the second time and then he got afraid. His biggest fear became somebody else is going to figure out what I'm doing and they're going to start doing the same thing. So he started opening up more Kinkos as quickly as he could, getting his friends involved, etc. until he was afraid that somebody would figure out what he's doing and start doing the same thing. And funny enough, nobody ever did. So once the concept is right, then everything changes. Walt Disney, people who know the story of Walt Disney and how he built his business, how he started with his brother, he struggled until he got the concept right and then suddenly everything took off. Carbonite computer backup systems, uh, online computer backup systems, so it saves all your files that are on your computer, uh, their business took off like crazy when they got the, business, the concept right. And I know a company who has almost exactly the same capabilities as Carbonite and they went bankrupt. All they had to do was you know, the same thing that Carbonite was doing basically and they would have had massive success. But Carbonite took off and these other people went bankrupt with all the same capabilities because Carbonite got the concept right. And our consulting practice was the same as we struggled as many businesses when they start out struggle. And then we started applying this to other businesses and as many coaches out there and consultants know, it's easier to, for us to apply stuff to other people than to apply it to ourselves. But eventually we started applying this to ourselves and our business took off like gangbusters. And so can yours and that's what I'm going to show you today. But what concept do you pick for your own business? Well, we challenged the we challenged the discovery against hundreds of businesses, small, medium, and large, that the discovery that we made with Kinko's to start understanding, does this apply to other businesses? And yeah, it applies to Apple, to Disney, what, to Mike Diamond Plumbing, who's very successful in Southern California, internet businesses, therapists and consultants, because we work with small businesses, as well as large businesses and medium-sized businesses, and manufacturers, distributors, and it's amazing that this stuff works for virtually every business. It seemed almost too simple. The first or one of the first companies I worked with was a company called Canco Construction, and they were three partners who, after 10 years in business, had reached $2 million of sales. Now, two million sounds like a lot and to most people. It certainly did to me. But for a construction company, it's not that much because you know you've got all your subcontractors and the construction costs and everything else. But they lived a pretty good lifestyle. But in one year, I took them from 2 million to 10 million in sales. 
it was amazing just applying this simple concept. Actually, it was a joke there because their goal was 12 million. I only got them to 10 million, but it's really kind of a wink because, you know, they all they bought each other Beamers, brand new Beamers, which I thought was really extravagant. But they so couldn't believe how much money they were making, how much success they had. Uh, in one year, what I was able to do for them, where they in 10 years they only reached just a fraction of that. And of course, our own business exploded. We have an internet business that took off like crazy. And I've coached hundreds and hundreds of people um, from everything from multi level uh, businesses to coaches to manufacturing distributor, you name it. So, my goal today is to share part of what I learned that you can so you can use it specifically with your business and to give you a process so you can get more clients more income per client and longer relationships with those clients okay and this will help you achieve non-stop income and that's what I'm gonna keep focusing on you don't wanna just get customers you want a flow of customers you want non-stop income you want freedom so that you can do the things that you want and you want the ability to make a difference most of us are in the service business and we're we're there helping other people and so the more successful you become the more people you can help and the more ways you can help people too and then this is a webinar at the end of this as we get close to the end of this I am going to expose you to a program uh, that we're offering that simplifies the this process uh, if you want the coaching for that as well and it's really a great program but again I'm going to give you real value until we get there uh, hopefully I'll give you value even when we get there but uh, but that's the process that we're going to go through and if you stay to the end there is a, a bonus and not some useless uh, PDF I did uh, in the past two weeks I was on somebody's and they had this uh, offer and I got to the end of it and the PDF was something when I looked at it, it was like oh it's not even that great but I think you're gonna find this to be really incredible if you hang on to the end of this whole presentation uh, I'm going to sh share with you a series of questions that exploded our business and I believe it can help yours as well uh, to become even more successful than you are right now now we're this is marketing and I want to talk about marketing for a second this is stuff that you can apply specifically to yourself and for those of you who have clients that are business type clients or business oriented clients you can use this with them as well I simplify it enough that you can go oh wow you understand the pieces and the modules and how they fit together and I want to say this because it is a, a problem for many people marketing just like sales is not a dirty word when I got involved first I hated it I do uh, therapist training uh, for uh, marketing training for therapists, PhD students at major universities. And this is something that came up, and actually, Jay Abraham uh, explains this a lot to uh, a lot of his students. He said, uh, you know, a lot of people, for a lot of people, marketing feels like malpractice. It's like selling, it's like death of a salesman and all that stuff, manipulation and all that. And that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about having a useful and valuable product or service and getting people who can use it and benefit from it to actually use it and benefit from it it feels like malpractice uh, many therapists say to have to become you know I learned more therapy or I learned my specialty and here I have to go out and market but here's the question if you're able to help people and you don't help people isn't that real isn't that real malpractice when you get on an airplane what do they tell you put the mask on yourself first if the mask comes down and then put it on the child or the person next to you if they need help but always put it on yourself first and so we're talking about once you have more income you'll be able to help more people in more ways now this is a simplified marketing process as I was saying and there are four simple pieces who what how now and it seems simple but don't be fooled by the simplicity of this because hopefully I'm gonna blow most of you away where you're gonna go through this and go wow I never thought of it that way but here's marketing from my perspective okay and what I'd like you to understand who are you focusing on who's your target customer what do you want to tell them in your ads and your talks how are you gonna reach them with your message and how do you get them to buy now because people are natural procrastinators now by going through a process like this you're gonna become a fast expert and you won't see this anywhere else okay I created this to solve a problem with so many people I was taking through uh, marketing training programs for score we would have hundreds and hundreds of people going through these programs and people just had a sense of overwhelm and I realized why don't I simplify this well here are the four pieces who what how now 
plus of course you have to implement because we get tons of people that go through training or uh, knowledge based uh, seminars and they still don't implement what a great idea wow this will really help my business and then a year later and two years later well I haven't had a chance to implement because life got in the way and so whatever I'm going to tell you even if this is really valuable for you remember you need a system or a way to implement even if you can find a buddy and the two of you kind of work off each to implement stuff that you're working on so Today I'm going to talk about the who. I'm going to talk about a huge part of the who section, hopefully in a way that's surprising and opens up, uh, you know, gets light bulbs going for you. I'm going to do three pieces. I'm going to talk about who's hot and who's not. I'm going to help you understand how to select a valuable niche, and how to, and then I'm going to get you to target strate a strategic channel to understand where the rainfall is plentiful so you can put your bucket underneath that rainfall and catch some of it on a continuing basis for yourself and for your business. So let me make a basic, uh, uh, I'm going to make a bold statement here. I bet you're focusing, most of you out there who are, wa are listening to this webinar right now, I bet most of you are focusing on the wrong target client. And I also bet your clients are doing the same. That if I can veer you just slightly, so you're focusing on a totally different person than you're focusing on right now, I'm willing to bet that um, avalanche will happen, and you'll start having a flow, a tremendous flow of clients where you're not having them right now. You're having one client at a time, and then you, once you get that one client, you have to go through the whole battle to try to get a second client or a third client. Maybe you'll get two clients at a time or three, but then you're almost unemployed right after that because you have to go out and find new clients, and that's nuts. Be if you can do this, which is find the find. The, uh, the position the bucket to catch the rainfall. Okay, so the channel piece, you're going to, in the channel piece is the, is the rainfall. Where's the rainfall? You're going to start with your own direct clients. Understand, you still have to service a client. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find your channel client and you're going to focus on them. And they, this may not be clear yet, but it is going to be more clear as I explain this. So let's start with the first part, hot and not. Let's start with a simple question. Of the, your ideal clients, okay, who's your ideal client? Do you know who your ideal client is? Could you answer that right now? Okay. Of all those people, because there are a lot of people that are ideal for you, to buy from you, who will never buy from you even if they're an ideal client? Can you tell me who's who will never buy from you even if they totally need your product or service? I bet for most of you, you can't just off the top of your head. And if you take the exercise, pull out some paper, don't do it now. Well, you can do it now if you want to. But if you pull out a piece of paper and list the three different types of people, there are people who will never buy from you, people who are ready to buy from you right now, and everybody else. If you can list who will never buy from you and start from that side and just make as long a list as you can, I bet it will start having you'll start having light bulbs go off where you go, oh wow, and this helps to define how is that person different from someone who's ready right now to buy from you. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to define who will never be a client. No matter what you do, they're never going to be a client or a patient. No matter how badly they need it. And then on the other side, who desperately wants what you're offering? They just don't know how to find you. So picture this, you're in a room with 200 people and there are some people out here who will never buy from you. Can you tell me just off the top of your head, who's never going to buy from you? Now you know that guy's never going to buy from you and the reason is, can you answer that? His brother does it or he doesn't believe he needs it or whatever, even though he's really seri seriously in need. This person will never buy from you because why? This person will never buy from you. There's no way in a hundred years this person will buy from you, no matter how badly they need it. But this guy back here, he is he's ne right now is ready to buy from you. Can you describe who he is? Who's ready to buy from you right now? And this lady over here in the front row. And this guy over here, he's ready to buy from you also. How are these people who are ready to buy dramatically different from everybody else or subtly different from everybody else? The more and better you can define these people who are ready to buy, the more effective you can be in how you market, how you reach them. And so the question is, if you're standing in a room, let's start here. If you're standing in a room with 200 people, finish this sentence. I'm looking for someone who, 
how would you describe that person? Right now has this need and then describe what it is. Right now is in this situation and describe what that is. Okay, so that's the first part is identifying and understanding clearly that's not the whole piece of this, but I'm just trying to set you up for this, is understanding clearly who's ready to buy and how are they different from everybody else. Well, the second part is, the uh, part of the secret is establishing a niche, uh, but it's not exactly as many, most of you out there are going to consider, or it's going to be a little different from what most of you consider, actually dramatically different in some ways. In marketing, we call it micro-segmentation, which is dividing, dividing a market into small pieces and then selecting a very narrow target and just one target that you focus on. Okay. Now, for radio, let's understand the concept of niche marketing for a second. Okay. Look at all the different types of formats. You've got hip-hop, rock, country. You've got music, which is like elevator music, hard rock, heavy metal. Uh, soft rock, you've got classical, you've got all news, there are all these different formats. Let's just take three simple ones, hip-hop, rock, and classical. So if you wanted to build a big business, uh, a big radio station with a large audience, would you have a hip-hop, rock, classical station? No, that's nuts, because you'd be, nobody wants, who loves hip-hop wants to hear rock and classical. In fact, 7-Elevens, wanted to get rid of gang members who were hanging around outside their restaurants and gang members tend to love hip hop and so what they did was they played classical music they pumped it in the speakers outside the 7-elevens and literally uh, gang members stopped hanging around there I mean that's how powerful it's actually a, a great uh, deterrent uh, playing the wrong type of music but with radio stations you want to specialize in a certain type hip hop rock classical and if you do that you're gonna build a larger audience than if you try to get them all well, let's take a look at it for therapists, okay? PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? You've got a cloud, which is funny because it's a crowd, okay? But you've got a cloud of rain, of rainfall, just of PTSD people, people that are interested in PTSD. You have marriage uh, and relationships, and then you have learning disorders and learning disorders with children. Well, if you're an expert in PTSD and marriage and relationships and learning disorders, you know, I mean, that's nuts. I mean, I, you might be pr uh, proficient in that, and I'm not asking you to turn away people who are not in your niche, but what you want to do is you want to understand that you want to take your bucket and place it under just one and become an expert or define yourself as an expert in just one because if I had a choice, if you had a choice between somebody who's, who does a generalist that does PTSD, marriage and relationships and learning disorders, or a specialist who just does marriage and relationships or just does families with PTSD or marriage and relationships with PTSD, uh, where PTSD is involved, one of the members has uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, then uh, I have a better chance of winning clients. It's much easier. But this is not the whole piece. And remember, we're talking about nonstop income, and that's why I'm talking about specialty here, okay, and uh, niche. But I want to go much deeper into niche because there's stuff that is not mentioned and that most people never even consider. Okay, again, remember, we're trying to position your bucket to catch the rainfall, okay? So when we focus on who, just a little general uh, comments here. Kinko's focused on college students and they became massively successful just by focusing on college students. That doesn't mean other people didn't come to them because other people did, and they certainly got plenty of business from them, but by their whole focus was on college students, and that's how they became massively successful. Um, Price Club, I work for uh, Saul Price, who founded Price Club, which is the precursor to um, Costco. And uh, in fact, uh, Senegal, who started Costco, worked for Saul Price. And for Saul Price and Price Club, we don't think of it. We go to, if you, anyone who's ever gone to Price Club, you know, they've got great discounts and everything else and massive shopping carts <laughs> that you end up filling your shopping cart with all kinds of stuff. But 60% of their business comes from other businesses, and most people don't understand this. All the restaurants, you know, they need salt and pepper, and they need spices, and maybe they need fish and certain other products. They actually go to Costco or Price Club, uh, now Costco, and they get their business. All the small stores that sell these little tchotchkes and these little things, they actually go to Price Club, and they get a special deal. There are certain hours that they can go, like the beginning of business, before everybody else is allowed to go in there. But 60% of Price Club... And 60% of Costco's income comes from retailers. 
Home Depot has contractors. Sure, they love you. If you ever got to Home Depot, it's like the men's toy store. It's got really cool stuff. But contractors, guys who build roofs and guys who uh, you know redecorate the homes and stuff like that, they get special discounts. They're enticed to go to Home Depot. Home Depot gets a massive amount of their business from them. And Walmart, he was competing with Kmart early on and Sears, and he focused on families with kids, Sam Walton did, and that's part of why he's become so massively successful. One of the things he said early on was, since we're serving families with kids, and if we're selling shirts, we need to make sure that the shirts we're selling are double-stitched. We can't go cheap just because we're selling uh, low-cost items. We need to make sell a product that's so great that a family with kids will want to come back over and over and over again, and of course, let's add more products and services that they'd want as well, and by focusing just on families, they became he became massively successful, and I, I guess they're not the most the biggest, but they're one of the biggest and most successful uh, companies on the planet. Now, our company, Leadership Management Associates, focused on IT first, which is uh, information technology techies or nerds or geeks, if you want to call them that, in big companies, and eventually migrated to IT for healthcare. Became massively successful. That's not all we did, but that became a, a key part of our business, a division of our business, and we just made nothing but money. It was fantastic. I have an insurance company, uh, insurance guy in this area who focuses on construction companies, just construction companies. And even during the, during the downturn in uh, the construction industry and the Great Recession we had, he made a ton of uh, money where other people were struggling because he focused just on construction. Um, Mary was the uh, top producer for Shearson in the Western United States, and, a, and a, a past partner I had worked with her and got her to focus on business owners and literally took a top producer for Shearson and increased her income 60% in a single year. And I've got another guy, Seth, who's a financial guy. You don't have to just go for business owners or people who are wealthy. He focuses on teachers, school teachers, and they're clustered. You know, one you go to one school teacher and work with them, and suddenly all, they know a gazillion other school teachers and principals, and then they have a family member in another school, and, met, and suddenly you're connected to another school. And it's just an easy way by doing this focus uh, to uh, build your business. But who should you select? And it's not who many of you think, or many of you may think. So how do you select the right niche? Okay, so let me take you through a little process, okay? First, a profitable niche is not random. There's your sweet spot, and your sweet spot is the combination of your expertise, your passion. It's got to be something you have some experience with, and you've got to have passion over it. The worst niche you're ever going to pick is something you can't stand, okay? And the third one, which is essential, is where the clients have access to money. You can pick a great niche, but if they don't have money, you're going to starve to death. And no matter how, uh, you know, no matter how much, uh, how benevolent you are, you still have to make a living. Remember, put the mask on yourself before you go out and help other people, or make sure the mask is firmly on yourself. So there are five rules of a profitable niche. Once you've picked that niche, you started picking that niche. The first one is they have to be easy to find. Uh, a great example is empty nesters, people whose kids have moved out. They're old, uh, the kids are old enough and they've gone to college or whatever and they've moved out. Well, if somebody focused on empty nesters, how would you find them? Where do they go? Where do they congregate? I mean, it's almost impossible to find them. So if you pick a niche that's not hard, not easy to find, that's going to be very tough. So you want to pick a niche and make sure that it, the people are easy to find. The second is they're easy to connect with, that they're responsive, they're available, they answer emails and phone calls. There are people in the broadcast industry, broadcast producers, that are on a 24-hour uh, cycle. And these people never return calls. They're always busy. They can't keep a regular appointment because, you know, they never know what, what if something's going to happen. And so are the people you're targeting easy to connect with? The third one is eager to evolve and progress. It's like uh, Tony Robbins concerts, uh, uh, Tony Robbins seminars, if you ever do that. Plumbers are unlikely to go to Tony Robbins uh, uh, workshops or seminars. Uh, are un, uh, it's, it's less likely they're going to be eager to evolve and progress. It doesn't mean all don't because many do, but as a general rule, they're so busy with their profession, the nature of their profession, maybe the type of person that it is, that they tend to not be as eager as others to evolve and progress. Well, along with eager to evolve, are they willing to invest? Mompreneurs is an excellent example. A lot of people focus on moms who are entrepreneurs. Well, who does a mom spend most of her money on? There's a 
pregnant pause there because you're thinking and the answer for most of you understand this is their kids and so it doesn't mean you can't make money with mompreneurs or mom entrepreneurs but they don't spend thousands of dollars on themselves so if you have a product or service where it costs a thousand dollars it's less likely you're gonna get mompreneurs now you can get around that if you're doing mompreneurs just using that as an example by lowering the price enough and then maybe grouping them together but if you want to make a good living and you should be making easily you know a hundred two hundred thousand a hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand dollars minimum in your business if you, you want to be focusing on people who are willing to invest and then narrow and deep you want to pick a, a niche that is narrow and deep you don't want to say just uh, everyone okay maybe PTSD marriages or PTSD uh, marriages where one of the members has post-traumatic stress disorder you know now I want to show you a little bit of how that works but here's a powerful formula I want to credit uh, consultant Milana Lashinsky for this uh, because it puts pieces together as far as I'm concerned uh, and I think as you're concerned too light bulbs are gonna go off as you see how this works I'm going to show you an example of uh, some examples of how this works also but the powerful formula for identifying a fantastic niche for yourself is taking your specialty then adding your target audience and then adding the problem you solve and putting all three together into a clear definition now a specialty is not a niche let me just start there okay these are specialties life coach wealth advisor business coach or business consultant relationship counselor all these these are specialties okay and a, what a, with a specialty you don't want to just pick a general specialty like business coach but you want to go narrow and deep which means you want to be more specific executive coaching or executive global coaching my one of my daughters uh, is what uh, is an executive for um, a, for a fortune 500 company and she had to do a massive seminar um, excuse me a big conference with people from all these different countries and she had to do coaching of people from India for example who always think that uh, people from Germany are hollering at them and so a lot of Indians are afraid of Germans and so part of the if you're going to focus on global executive coaching then you've got a whole niche over there which is very specific from everybody else's coach uh, coaching area where they might be just a general business coach you have leadership coaching management coaching organizational coaching sales coaching and just focusing on one narrow niche it becomes much easier to attract the best customers but this is only the first piece of these th this three piece puzzle that I'm going to show you relationship coach well you've got focusing on singles and dating or couples or gay lesbian relationships or divorce issues parent child relationships extended family relationships or age specific ones like baby boomers or seniors etc so what you do and I want to invite you to do this is take your specialty and focus on a narrower niche or a narrow niche if you haven't done that already okay now let's put the pieces together well excuse me now let's talk about some less profitable niches before we put the, lead, uh, the pieces together life balance confidence stress release people have the need for this but stress release is use that as an example is a tough one because it's so general life balance what does that mean I mean I understand what it means but if focusing on a specific narrower target becomes much more profitable if you just do life balance many people are starving to death and we know from the statistics and from the people that we interact with that uh, we interact with literally over the years I've interacted with thousands of people that these people tend to starve or be struggling much more than others empty nesters because they're hard to find moms and retirees because they tend to not spend a lot of money and so unless you package what you're offering so that uh, in, in so it's a low price retirees want to protect their nest egg and trying to get them to spend money in most cases is tougher particularly for coaches and then there are certain professions like a fine artist tend to not spend a lot of money whereas web designers will spend more money so let's go back to our formula and let me show you how this works so the formula is SAP specialty plus target audience plus the problem you solve and hopefully light bulbs will go off for you because light bulbs went off for me and for so many others who see this so you start with your specialty life coaching of course going deeper but let's say life coaching communication parent coaching career coaching entrepreneur coaching now to that we're gonna add the audience we're gonna say life coaching for women lawyers is not more powerful doesn't it already sound if I'm focusing on life coaching for women lawyers or communication for IT managers that's one of the areas we focused on 
uh, parent coaching for parents of children with ADHD, uh, 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 career coaching for physicians, entrepreneur coaching for sales executives. Okay, you see how that works? Now we're going to add the third piece, the problem you solve. So the specialty, the audience, and then the problem you're solving. So life coaching for women lawyers who want to balance career and family. Now take a moment and, and, and take this in. Isn't this much more powerful than just saying I'm a life coach? You're, this person's a life coach, but I'm a life coach for women lawyers who want to balance career and family. It's easier to understand. It's easier to sell. It's easier to get people to excited about what you do. We have communication uh, coaching for IT managers who want to improve the performance of their team, of their people, who are so always fighting and not interacting well or not understanding what's going on. Parent coaching for parents of kids with ADHD who want their kids to integrate with, ev with the, everyone else without drugs. You see how much more powerful that is? Career coaching for physicians who want leadership, leadership positions in healthcare organizations. There are a lot of upwardly mobile physicians, doctors who want a senior executive position. They want to be on a board of directors of a hospital or a hospital chain. And they have lots of money, by the way. And so if you're a career coach in this area, it can be tremendously uh, lucrative for you. Entrepreneur coaching for sales executives who want to build or expand profitable distributorships. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth of what yours would be, but think through this. What's your specialty? Who's the target audience? And if you have three or four or five target audiences, pick one. Start with one and then focus on what's the problem for them and just do everything. Focus all your efforts just on that one first. And once you become hugely successful in that one area, then you, you can move on to the next one. One of the things that we found is that people who find a good niche end up focusing so much on the one area that they can literally spend their entire life just on that one niche even though at some point early on they thought they would try others if you're making a ton of money and you're a specialist in this area you suddenly become known for this area uh, of expertise and this niche then it just it attracts business to you so can you see how powerful this is how simplified the targeting becomes now I'm not done with this because I want to this is only a part of the piece that I want to show you today because this is not um, uh, positioning your bucket to catch the rainfall. This is the setup to that, okay? So can you see how powerful this is? It's simplified targeting. It's easier to attract people. And you can actually price better. You don't have to be the low price spread because you're an expert in a certain area that's of demand. Now, focusing on the profession versus the person, and this scares a lot of people. It scared me early on when I started, but you don't need to be a profession. You don't need to know the profession because you're coaching. We coach the person, not the profession. It's funny because I had a client uh, a while back, and he kept a, a high-tech client, and he kept wanting to show me, here's how our processes work. Can I show you our plan? Can I show you what we do? I was nice. I, I mean, I, I, I was... Uh, I, I took a, a tour of the plant, but I kept telling him, I don't need to know this. I don't want to know this. And he kept saying, Look, we want to show you how the technology works. It's like, I don't really want to know. Thank you. Because it's your expertise that they're hiring in the specialty area you have, not at your expertise in their profession. You could know it, but remember, we're talking about nonstop income. Okay, again, we're trying to get you to position the bucket to catch the rainfall. There's a rainfall of clients and you want to position the bucket. So then we get to the third piece in the who part, which is the channel. I call it channel partner. But where is the rainfall? Who gets these clients? Okay. And let me, I'm, I'm going to twist a lot of your minds sideways by going through a little bit of a, about this. But this is profound. This is a profound concept. So I want to, you to try to get your brain around this, okay? Is your target really the end user? Let's take the iPad and the iPhone, Apple, okay? Who is their end user? Who is the ideal customer for them? The end user, you and me who buy the iPhone and the iPad? Actually, no. Steve Jobs, who was brilliant, recognized that it was not end users he wanted to focus on. It was the, the primary focus was app developers or application developers. And he wanted to make it easy and profitable for people to create applications that would go on the iPhone because he knew that people would create wacky applications and uh, brilliant applications far better than his people could and they'd come up with ideas that nobody ever thought of. I put here the iFart app, okay? 
because it's amazing. This guy who was going to college wanted to make extra money, and so Apple made it easy for him. He made it easy because he made it easy for someone who doesn't know programming to program, and he made it easy for someone to sell it, to make money with it, because you could sell it on the iTunes store. And so this guy came up with the iFart app, which is, sorry for the name, I hope I'm not offending anyone there, but that's the actual name of the company. And they, the phone made gross noises on a timer. So you'd put your phone on, on your chair in an office, it's really an office gag thing, and you'd set it for 30 seconds, and then you'd get up from your chair and you'd walk away, and it would intermittently start making really gross sounds. And people would look around, and you'd be standing in the corner, and then you'd start laughing as you start so watch people start to get that it was the phone making the sounds and not a person. And it's really a funny gag, but he sold it for 99 cents, and he made, okay, get this, $10,000 a day. Of course, he made 7000 because 3000 went to Apple because Apple is part of the process. Not only do they make it easy for developers, but they take a piece of what developers uh, who are people who are selling the apps uh, uh, make. But what happened was he made 7000 a day. Many people, most people don't make 7000 a month. He was making 7000 a day and generating just you know, just millions of dollars, literally. It just is phenomenal. But Apple recognized their primary focus had to be on app developers, people who have access to the channel, who are going to market themselves rather than uh, going, focusing on you and me. Because he figured if we get lots of those people, the app developers, they're going to bring the customers in. Amazon, similarly, you know, he sold books and he focused initially. Uh, only books eventually expanded. Obviously, uh, Amazon's much larger. And he focused on website owners, and he made it easy for website owners and valuable for them. That it's easy. Just put one of these links up here, and then every time somebody buys off that link, then you're going to get. We're going to pay you a certain amount. Now, Carbonite online backup people, uh, they make a computer backup for your files, so you can just find their online uh, app, uh, online uh, link click the link and it starts um, saving all your files so all your pictures and the other files that you have in case your computer ever crashes you'll always be able to re uh, you know upload it all again because it's saved on uh, the carbonite uh, uh, carbonite uh, online uh, servers well they're they're liberal but they went to rush limbaugh who's very conservative but he has an audience of 20 million people and he's he's pontificates, uh, and uh, he talks to his audience. And so, one of the things that they recognized at Carbonite was uh, radio personalities convince their audience if they're convinced. So they came up with this idea: Why don't we fly out to Florida? That's where his he he is. Um, it, I was reading an article about this. I thought it was so fascinating. So he's in Florida. So they went out and they followed him and uh, on his golf course, and they showed him how he could access his files on the golf on his golf course with his iPhone or his smartphone. And he just they got Rush Limbaugh to fall in love with their product, and as a result of that, he sold it. He's the front man to all these massive audience of 20 million people. He started selling it to them, and literally just by focusing on this one personality who had a massive audience they became massively wealthy they sold it at that time for fifty five dollars a year and they signed up almost in a very short period of time a million people by the way for those of you who have difficulty doing math a million times fifty five dollars is fifty five million dollars a year okay it's a little more than i made this year but anyway but because they focused just on one target they identified him because he has the audience they went on to Howard Stern and many other people who they recognize have massive audience and then they again they didn't just advertise with these people but they went out there and sold them because they recognize that these people have a lot of clout with their audience again we're talking about remember I'm talking about position the bucket to catch the rainfall where's the rainfall if somebody has your audience you know, wouldn't it be nice if you can veer some of those people to you? And if you can do it in a way that's ongoing, then you never have to worry about income again. Home Depot did it with contractor trade associations that they made them a deal they couldn't refuse. They made it so easy and valuable. If you're a, if that the contractors would say join our trade association, you get special discounts from Home Depot. 
and this is uh, how Home Depot built their business. McDonald's focus, we think it's on us getting into the restaurant, but their actual primary focus is franchisees. Look at how easy it is to have a business of your own. Just put up at this point about a million dollars, it could be less, but about a million dollars for a high-end franchise and we'll show you how to make a good living. And That's McDonald's, they're selling to franchisees. Subway's also selling to franchisees and so they compete with McDonald's. They said, you know, McDonald's cost a million but ours costs like a hundred thousand and you don't have to have, you can locate in more locations, you don't have to have the, the heavy, uh, you know, cooking materials that we have and they became massively successful also focusing in, on franchises and competing. TV Guide, this is, I'm trying to get your brain around this concept of, of uh, position the bucket to catch the rainfall, of where's the rainfall. TV Guide, a lot of people don't know this, they focus on grocery stores, this people know. You know, they sell in grocery stores. So what they did was they went to grocery stores and they had, they gave away a free rack uh, to hold magazines because they, they recognized when they started that uh, grocery stores were not using the impulse area right next to the cash register to sell anything and they said you know what you guys can make more money if you sell magazines here so we're going to give you a rack that holds magazines oh and of course it holds our magazine right in the front and they picked the size of their magazine that's smaller than everything else so the only thing you could put in that that slot was Reader's Digest but in this way Reader's Digest became massively successful by offering the uh, the racks Oh, I said Reader's Digest. I meant TV Guide, excuse me. I even know I showed the example of Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest did it too, but TV Guide is the one that started that. So sorry about that. Mathnasium is math tutoring for kids. And we did coaching of uh, uh, a lady who was opening a second Mathnasium, and she had so so uh, results in business from her Mathnasium. So again, let's go back to the question of position the bucket to catch the rainfall. So for her, where was the rainfall? Well, places like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, uh, upscale, depart, uh, upscale, upscale uh, grocery stores. So what we did was we we found from top franchisees, and Mathnasium was a franchise, it's a math tutoring franchise, that the most successful ones will locate right next door to a Whole Foods or a Trader Joe's. So all the people that are going there, you can funnel some of their traffic into your business and spend almost no money, maybe put a sign outside, but except for that, spend almost no money on advertising because Whole Foods or Trader Joe's is already bringing hundreds of tens of thousands and sometimes hundreds of thousands of people to their location. Uh, Laura Langemeyer, she's a, a coach to a lot of women and uh, she had three health clubs in the Louisiana area and she was approached but she could have done this also she could have approached them by an oil well operator and the oil well operator as he started talking to her he explained that there are literally hundreds of oil derricks uh, off the Louisiana coast and they have to work hard to try to retain their people because they're going to be working maybe for months at a time on one of the oil derricks and so they came up with the idea of why don't we have health clubs well her focusing on uh, a manager of the oil derricks, it became overnight that she went from literally just three little health clubs to hundreds of health clubs because they, and they paid her a massive upfront fee because by the way, she had no idea how she was going to do it, but she said yes anyway and then figured out on the fly and she told them it's obviously it's going to, you're going to have to pay a certain amount upfront and they said fine and everything she said, you have to have a good poker face sometimes for that, everything they, she asked for, they gave her because they were so happy to have literally hundreds of, uh, her uh, health clubs on all these platforms. But so again, we're talking about position the bucket to catch the rainfall. Where's the rainfall? For therapists, other therapists, healthcare providers, uh, MDs and general practitioners, for internet marketers, wouldn't you like to uh, the rain? Wouldn't you like to partner up with somebody who has a really large list of customers that are ideal for you? That are your customers, and somehow they're willing to share them with you. Uh, web or websites that attract high numbers of your clients. I'm talking about Reader's Digest. Well, they have a fantastic website with millions of people. Wouldn't you like to tap into that if that's your audience? The key is you pick one that meets these criteria. You make it easy and valuable for them, and the rest, as they say, is history. So what you're doing is positioning the bucket to catch the rainfall. So business consultants, and we went through this. We identified banks. Banks can tell us right away which businesses are successful or in trouble and which ones aren't. CPAs and attorneys are fantastic for that. They've got the customer. So instead of focusing on the end user, why don't we focus on banks and CPAs and attorneys? So the benefit to them, and I remember the first 
company I used, I did this on, was a company, uh, a bank in Glendale called One Central Bank. They eventually got bought out by one of the big banks, Bank of America. America or something like that, but the benefit to them was we built the biz their businesses, uh, we built their bank or their business by growing their clients. It was really fantastic. And in fact, we went, we got to Kenco Construction from them because they said, "Wow, this is really fantastic. Why don't we send you to our clients?" And they, you know, we went to Kenco and they grew like crazy and they started sending us to all these other clients. And it was a ticket to print money. Then we went to other banks and said, look at what we're doing for them and we can do the same for you. We can build your business by increasing the success of your clients. But there, understand that we had to address an obstacle and this is an important part of this. Just going to a lot of these people doesn't mean they're actually going to open their doors and the floodgates will uh, start, will just open up. You often have an obstacle that you have to address and once you can overcome the obstacle, the floodgates will often open right up. In this case, attorneys or accountants don't recommend. They don't like to recommend because they feel they have liability. And so we had to create a system or a process that would overcome this uh, obstacle. W until we did, you know, they were reticent to uh, recommend. But once we opened it, we made it really easy for them. Then they went, oh, wow. Oh yeah, okay, absolutely, we'll help you. And they helped us, we helped them, and we got tons of clients. And with each uh, CPA attorney and bank that we work with, the floodgates opened so much that we just, you know, couldn't even handle all the business. So you have to understand the channel rules. You might say, and I wouldn't suggest people do this right up front, but once therapists are successful, I was talking about Joe early on, so he talked about this, that they built networking and went through all this, but he also recommended that a lot, he also recognized a lot of his clients are on Google, and they've tried everything else, and they've hit a brick wall, and they're looking for a therapist, they're looking for a, someone to help a parent or a family member, whatever else it is, um, and they'll actually go to Google. So you could spend money on things like Google AdWords, but you have a lot of these things, and this is why what I'm showing you doesn't require all the money, but a lot of these things require mo money and a lot of money. If you have the money, you definitely want to do this and experiment, but you have to pass critical mass. You can't spend too little, because if you spend too little, you actually get no results. You have to pass over, spend over a certain point, and then the money starts flowing in. That's why for most of you, or many of you on the call, you probably won't go through this, but if you have money, um, one of the things we discovered was it cost five dollars a day in Google to advertise in Google. It cost five dollars a day to get one client a month, which means it, it, you have to spend fifteen hundred dollars to get ten new clients a month. But Joe recognized this with his business, and it took off because uh, and and it just it just grew from there. But uh, and you know you want you want lots of clients you don't want just one client tripling in uh, trickling in one at, at a time etc so there is a critical mass as far as how much you spend so understand the channel rules retailers have something called slotting fees where they charge you to sell your product inside uh, their uh, their uh, location so a good example is bookstores I have a book I want to sell my book well guess what some will charge eight thousand dollars there are two major chains in the country one charges eight thousand one charges thirty thousand obviously the thirty thousand one has more stores but eight thousand dollars they say if you want us to carry our book we'll evaluate it if we like it then you have to pay us eight thousand dollars to carry the book now the good news is and even with the thirty thousand dollar one uh, I can sell um, over a million dollars or half a million dollars worth of book, half a million dollars profit worth of books, so it's worth it to spend $30,000. But you have to understand a rule that they'll help you sometimes if you have money. Obviously, they don't. this is if you have money or once you start making money, you can actually grow even more, but you don't have to, and that's why I was showing you this. But I still want to touch on this uh, because when you put cash on a table, you can also gen generate uh, uh, results. QVC is a good example. We have a client that uh, wanted to sell on the Home Shopping Network, QVC. And uh, QVC requires a minimum inventory of $50,000. If you're going to advertise, they want to make sure you have at least $50,000 worth of product available in case people start buying. They don't want them to be disappointed. So there are some rules. But again, most of what I'm talking about here doesn't require having to spend this kind of money. It just requires understanding who has your clients or access to your clients and how do you get them, how do you get a percentage of them to come to you, okay? So the channel source versus direct must be a key decision because we're talking about flow uh, of business. And it could be something simple like putting, getting a sign put on a property so your channel source would be the owner of the property. Or it could be the location like I was saying with the mathnasium. But it could be a joint venture partner or an informal partner, someone who's willing to help you or you help them, they help you. But once you get 
uh, channel source, everything suddenly becomes simplified. And again, I keep coming back to this because if you can embrace this concept and start looking at your own business, it becomes uh, dramatically simpler to understand what you need to do is position the bucket to catch the rainfall. Okay, to catch the rainfall means you have to go where the rainfall is and then position your bucket, which is position your business. So remember the four pieces, who, what, how, now. I got you to define or at least understand the process of defining what's who's hot and who's not, uh, selecting a valuable niche, and then targeting a strategic channel where the rainfall is plentiful. And I went through this and, you know, some you'll get some of this and you'll be able to apply it yourself but remember the key is implementation if this makes sense to you even in part if you understand how this can help explode your income in your business then you still need to implement it uh, to help you of course I have a coaching program uh, that's available it's a five-week coaching program it's state-of-the-art it's to help you build non-stop income for your business and it's simple enough to use even with your clients if you're in a business area you don't have to be in a business area but for those of you who are this is a powerful way that you can use it with your clients as well as with yourself we're talking about non-stop income for consultants consult coaches and experts uh, the program is called the twist test and the twist test is comprised it takes you through three steps the first one is called the five questions the second one is the barriers to buying and the third one is the actual twist and here's how it works each one has short videos you can see here from 43 seconds up to about three minutes or three and a half minutes but usually about a minute minute and a half and then it has simple exercises that it takes you through that you're gonna watch a video then do an exercise and this is so powerful people just tell us it's just amazing how it just by going through this process you answer the questions and then obviously with the coaching then we fine-tune it for you but it the five questions are this what do you offer what's the outcome not just what do you offer what's the outcome of what you offer are people gonna be better how are they gonna be better what's the what's their life gonna be like once they uh, uh, you know use or benefit from your product or service but what do you offer to who which I covered a lot of this here not all of it but we covered a huge piece of this what do you what do you offer to who how is it used what's your competition not just who's your competition but what's your what's your competition and why yours oh yes we're still on air okay good 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 sorry when with uh, we're using Google Hangouts here and sometimes you get funny noises uh, so why yours Let's take this area of the of the, uh, the of the five steps. What do you offer to who? How's it used? What are you competing with? And why yours? So we take why yours. There's a simple formula you can use: is PSC FBA, which is problem, solution, credibility, features, benefits, action. And it's amazing when you apply a formula like this, how it becomes so uh, you know it just it changes everything and makes life easier. Let's take credibility. Well, there are eight important tools of credibility. Offer a demonstration, affiliation, uh, uh, testimonials, emotional phrases, statistics, frame of reference, where you establish a frame of reference so you compare it to what's out there, specifics and analogies. And so let me give you an example, uh, two examples, affiliation. Well, affiliation is what are you affiliated with? Uh, the George Foreman Grill, if any of you related to that, just had his name, George Foreman. And by affiliating with George Foreman, it became uh, hugely successful and it built credibility. This is again the credibility piece of the formula uh, for why yours. Uh, so with who or what can you affiliate? With me, I work with tons of Fortune 500 companies and I name drop, you hear me do that. Uh, I also uh, was a, a workshop chairman for SCORE, a resource partner of the US Small Business Administration and do coaching for them. And, uh, uh, I, and for some of you on the call, you actually got a recommendation from somebody and so that added my affiliation with them. Uh, I was uh, uh, the pit bull industry for pit bull, and I'm not a big fan of pit bulls, but uh, and my son has one, and it's like, oh, I hate pit bulls. But anyway, but so for those of you who p are pit bull people, okay, and those who aren't, I'm with you guys. But anyway, <laughs> let me not get into that. But the pit bull people, uh, pit bull breeders, uh, would not be recognized by the AKC, the American Kennel Club, and so what they did was they created their own trade association for pit bulls, so that they could have uh, greater credibility. The IAHS is insurance companies, the, uh, uh, the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, and they created an, uh, uh, the IAHS to add credibility for insurance companies. Now they can show the IAHS uh, seal and it looks all 
like they're all a member of a, this massive organization, which they are, but uh, they created the organization. I have a, a friend that I'm networking with who's uh, started the Integrative Medicine Association, and she recognizes that there's a whole area of growth uh, called integrative medicine, and so she, but there wasn't, she didn't like the associations that were out there, so they created, she created their, the integrative, uh, uh, sorry, what's it called again? Uh, the Integrative Medicine Association. Now let's go on to just one other piece of emotional phrases and show you how powerful this can be. So someone says, they give you a price objection, why is your price so high? Well, here's a powerful emotional way to respond to that. Why is your price so high? Well, why do you think their price is so low? And I'll tell you, you think this is like, okay, this is something you just put on paper. <laughs> I was in business with my uh, one of my brothers and he used this line all the time. And when we had an advertising business early on, we, I remember the first client we did this with was Avon. Avon said, you know, you guys are a little more expensive than everybody else. And my brother turned to them and said, well, why do you think their price is so low? There was a long pause and they went, I see your point. Okay. And then the guy literally reached out and gave us a purchase order. And to me it was like, whoa, that works. But it does. There are powerful emotional phrases you could use that could be really, really powerful and effective ways uh, to, you know, to help you get credibility and build your business. Okay, so step one was the five questions. Step two is barriers to buying. Price is definitely one of the barriers, but it's only one of six. A lot of people think, well, people don't buy from me because of my price and they can't afford it whenever else. But that's not totally true. For most businesses, it's less important than most people realize. I mean, do you buy the cheapest of everything? Is that what you do? Do you have the cheapest car? Do you live in a, the poorest neighborhood? My guess is not. People don't buy the cheapest or the lowest cost of everything. If we talk about price, look at Kinko's. Kinko's sold photocopies, okay, a generic product, photocopies. They were higher priced. They sold to cash-strapped student, students and uh, cash-strapped cash college kids, and they made a fortune. So the question is, rather than price, what they did was that Kinko's eliminated the real obstacle. So what's the real obstacle for your business? You, too, can grow your business tremendously by uncovering or understanding some of the real obstacles or often it's just one or one or two major obstacles and if you can overcome those major obstacles suddenly the, the floodgates start flowing for you it's amazing and the third part of the three steps is the twist we already talked a little bit about that with niche marketing being part of it and the ability to raise prices a lot of people don't realize this but did you know that if your price is too low it could hurt your business well, this is only part of the 10 twists. And it's called a twist test because of the concepts with the, within the twist test. It's revolutionary and simple. And the twists, and these are the twists that made success for all these uh, businesses. And there are tons of businesses, and you can start seeing this. You're going to start seeing household names. And you go, oh, that's, that's true. That's true. That makes sense for them. It's easy to apply to you. You simplify your growth, often at little or no cost. So these are the three parts, the five questions, barriers to buying, and the twist test. It's available in a five-week coaching program, and it, which guides you through the three modules. There are easy videos and action guides, weekly conference call, uh, interact, you get to interact with others, and you get to ask your questions and get your questions answered. And then you'll have the four parts of who, what, how, now for your business and help with implementing it so that you can actually benefit from it and not just have a bunch more knowledge. You'll also have the tools and skills you need to build your business or practice and have the life you've always wanted and the life you deserve. If you're helping people, you deserve to be making a good income. There's no need to repeat. That's one of the things that's really powerful about this. Once you get your marketing down pat, for most people, you will, this is a once-in-a-lifetime process. It isn't something you have to do every year. Once you get the process down, then you don't have to repeat it, and then you get, you know, you, it's a once-in-a-lifetime process to get you on track. Why struggle when this is so easy? <clears throat> so... Um, and remember, it's not the question is not how do I get clients. The question is, let me do this. How do I get a flow of clients? And that's the most important thing you want to focus on. Finally, you'll be able to help others without being a prisoner, generate the income you deserve, and have a flow of clients. Okay. Now, 
because we deliver such dramatic results, we charge $13,000 for eight weeks of coaching. But it won't cost you anywhere near that if this is even remotely interesting for you. Uh, if it, by the way, hang on for a couple of minutes, and I'm going to show you also this bonus that I think is going to be valuable, whether you're interested in going forward with this or not. But let me start with this. What do you get? What do you what you get is five weekly coaching calls, and it says five, but you get six because the first one is a setup call, which is a $7,200 value. Then the twist test program itself, which has uh, more than 60 videos, they're short videos, and an action guide, which is $997 value. Uh, you get the membership, including our private network, ongoing videos and tools, and quest your questions answered. It's $1,200 to be part of this network. Then you get nine-step marketing uh, plan program, which is $119, which helps you to formalize some pieces that we'll use to show you how do you who, what, how, now. The how and the now has huge pieces uh, in that, in uh, of all the different ways to market and apply this. And some people want to do a business plan also. A marketing plan is a key part of that. Then we have sample marketing plans so you can actually eavesdrop on how other people market and just uh, steal or borrow things from them. And then the median methods grid, which is a really powerful uh, shopping list that you go through. It's a checklist of all the different ways that you can market to bring business. And it's got things, people look at this and go, oh, I never thought of that. Oh, this is really great. And it's like a uh, just a shopping list that you check off of things of ways to attract your customers. This is a $9,500 and $50 program if you paid the price on the value. Okay, this is valued over $9,000, but you're not going to pay $9,000 if you're interested in this. You're not even going to pay $2,000. You're not even going to pay $1,000. For a limited time, this, the full program is $597. Okay, but there's something else. I promised a powerful bonus if you stayed to the end, and I'm going to deliver on that. First, let me just say, for those where the program is just out of reach financially, there is a smaller version of this. What we do is we take off the coaching, and so the balance, the value is $2,350, but you're not going to have to pay that. The, the video program alone, if you go through the videos, and if you want to do it totally on your own, which you can do, it's set up that way, is $97. But plus, if you go with the coaching for a very limited time, <clears throat> I'll include this. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the most powerful training secrets ever revealed. And hang on just a second. Let me just take a drink here. Ah, there we go. Should have been booze. That's what I should have had. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, if you go for the coaching, I'll include one of the most powerful training secrets ever revealed. Now remember at the beginning, I promised you a bonus that you can use almost immediately. And so let me share this with you. And so far, I said I'd show you uh, how to get more clients, uh, how to get more income per, clients, uh, per client, and how to get a longer relationship with them. And I took you through the first two. So, so far we've covered the first two, not in depth, but a large enough part of it that you can see how you can get more clients and you can get more income per client. But the, what I'm going to show you is a way to get even more income per client and have longer relationships with your clients. And what we uncovered is a powerful secret to define and validate personal and professional goals. Now, for this bonus, I'll explain it right now, okay, how it works and why it's so effective for winning and retaining great clients. You don't have to pay for this, but if you go in a coaching program, you get uh, you go you actually get ex to experience the process yourself and you get, you know, a few more tools on how to implement this. But it's called we call it tasking. Be, and because you're still on the call, here's a key part of this. <clears throat> well, where do we get this first? Let me explain this. There's a world-famous therapist who had a problem patient. This patient came back for 2 years, week after week or month after month. Uh, I think it was every two weeks, and just he just constantly complained about. It. He was always complaining that he had this problem, and the the therapist felt like he was getting nowhere with the with the patient. Uh, literally had no progress from his standpoint, even though the patient kept coming back. And so one day he finally he said, "Let's go out for a walk." He took him out for a walk. He'd see he lives in San Francisco, and he finally asked him the big question: "Once you're better, what will your life be like?" And it threw the guy for a loop. It threw the patient for a loop. And he went, what? He said, yeah, once you're better, let's, let's paint a picture of this. Let's describe this. Once you're better, what's your life going to be like? How's it going to be different? 
And once he started defining this, light bulbs went off and everything changed for this patient. He became famous for using this with all his patients. What we did is we adapted this. It sounds simple, but it's actually profound because we've done this on literally hundreds and hundreds of businesses and thousands, over a thousand individuals and have had dramatic results. So I want to show you how this works. So we adapted it. We combined a bit of aggressive therapy elements uh, and, and turned it into a powerful questionnaire and process that boots, boosts desire and retention by your best coaching clients. So initially, we used it for CEOs and owners of businesses, but eventually we applied it to thousands of individual uh, coaching clients uh, where there was, we weren't focusing on the business side. We start with a regressive piece to establish a frame of reference. Then we establish a benchmark uh, by defining an important goal, clarifying the goal, and determining an emotional uh, personality and skill obstacle. And then we strengthen emotional buy-in by confirming and validating the strength of the need and the value, uh, its value in quality and in dollars if you want to do that. We did dollars too because of ours was business related, but you don't have to do it dollars. You can do it just quality and, and you'll get also the same type of benefit. So here goes. And the same type of buy-in. You asked a person in the past year, has your life been growing stable or declining? Or has your income been growing stable or declining? Whatever you want to focus on. Has your revenue been growing? Have your, has your business been growing stable or declining? If you're a personal coach, you would say, from a personal standpoint, has your life or your income been growing stable or declining? This year, what's your goal? Or what are your goals? Over the next few years, what would you love to accomplish if you could accomplish anything? Why did you pick that? What holds you back from accomplishing that? And once better, what will you be able to accomplish? Once better, what will change in your life? Okay? So next, we identify a skill or emotional blockage. Now, we picked business-related because that's the area we focused on, but you can pick whatever is your sweet spot, okay? Uh, again, we first start with a contrast. So we ask, what are your two greatest strengths? And an improvement in which area would help you have the greatest impact? Would have the greatest impact? And this is a nice way of saying, well, what are your weaknesses? But instead of saying, what are your weaknesses? That's not a nice thing to say. I think to a lot of people, it's uh, you know not as effective as saying an improvement in which of these areas would have the greatest impact for you. Now we had four, and we said uh, personal organization, being more organized. Improved productivity defined as spending more time in high payoff activities. You know, sometimes you get bogged down with so many things that you're not focusing on the things that are most valuable for you. Developing subordinates and delegation or communication. We had them pick one. Often they'd say, oh, all of them. We'd say, okay, I know, but pick the one that has the greatest, uh, that, you know, just pick one. Next, we validate. Why did you pick that? What holds you back? And once better, what will you be able to accomplish that you're not accomplishing now? Then we tangibilize. So let's, <clears throat> so let's pick a three to six month task or project, something that will move you significantly towards that goal that you talked about if you, that you'd love to accomplish in the next few years if you could accomplish anything. By when, what's the value, and what are the steps? And just get a couple of steps, two or three steps. Then you dig deeper, and this is so important. I can't stress how important this is. You say, once that's done or well on its way, what's next that you'd want to focus on? Again, something that takes three to six months. By when? What's the value? And what are the steps? And the reason you ask this, I can't tell you how many times this happened, is that this is a brainstorming process where you're getting them to identify something that's really valuable for them. So often the first one is not, more, is not the most important, but once they've nailed down the first one and you've got them to define a second one, the second one becomes that thing that will actually change their life or at least move them significantly towards that. Now lastly, we prioritize. Of the two, which is more important to start if we're going to start with one of them? So what do we have now? We've turned a dream into a tangible goal. We have a behavioral problem defined and valued. And we have a, six, a, three, or a three to six month emotional buy-in that they recognize is going to take three to six months and it's going to take help to get there. Now the beauty is there's no need to understand 
the business area, we have coaches, I have just coaches and trainers, we got people from ASTD as well as uh, from major uh, consulting companies, et cetera, that work for us, and, you know, they, they recognize, as we all recognize, we're coaching the person, not the profession. You want to ensure they understand, so ask them, and you know, use their words. If they say, well, it's a highfalutin thing, then you want to write down highfalutin thing, and capture their words if you can. Then you want to choose... They choose the steps. Get them to choose the steps. Okay. You simply clarify: Are these the are that these are the best ones that they've chosen? Is that the best one? And they'll tell you, "Oh yeah, that is." Okay, and you got that. So just capture that. If you can capture it in writing, it's better. And must be a stretch. You're like a personal trainer, a personal coach. That if they could do it themselves, they don't need you. So say over and above what you could do. What's something that you want to tackle? Is that so? If they said, "Well, I want to meet with my accountant or whatever it is," I pick something just mundane here. Oh, not mundane. Sorry for you accountants out there, but uh, something uh, basic. Uh, if they were going to do that anyway, that's not good enough. So you want to have them do steps that are a stretch for them. Then you become the person that's kind of pushing them beyond so they can accomplish something dramatic on a personal side as well as the business side uh, or the business side. Uh, next, you want to implement. This is a simple process that you can implement. It adds just five minutes to your coaching. It ensures tangible progress, even for complex personal goals. Uh, and uh, if you get the coaching today, then you'll get the entire process step by step of how to do this and how to integrate it into your business. So let's go back through this. Again, just by the way, this is a really simple way to get clients to achieve incredible goals. I can't. I have such life-changing goals that people accomplish, and they say you're a miracle worker. How do you do this? And I just kind of laugh. Yeah, I mean, I, I laugh because it's such a simple process and yet so profound. And no one's doing this. If you get this, you're going to start doing this thing that nobody else is doing, and you won't believe how powerful this is as an add-on to your business. You easily add it to any coaching or therapy pro uh, process you're using. It only adds five minutes or less to each coaching or consulting session you have, and it's easy follow-up, easy to follow up, even by phone. So if you have... Um, you know, if you do phone consultation, uh, let's say you meet them only once a month, you could still have a phone consultation once a week for five minutes, and this will have an impact for you. It adds massive value to your existing coaching. Okay, and so that's the bonus, and it's only available today if you sign up for our uh, for our coaching program. Now, remember, when you ask the right questions, suddenly everything is easier. And what I've given you today is the five questions. What do you sell or what do you offer to who? How's it used? What are you competing with and why yours? So you can be uh, expert in marketing just by asking the right questions without even understanding beyond much of that. And then the tasking questions as far as the goal is concerned. So here's, so here's what you want, right? You want the four parts, who, what, how, now. So you've got that nailed down for you personally and you want help with implementation. Okay, so here are your choices. You can use what's been given to you today, and hopefully this was really valuable for you. Or, number two is you can use the twist test with the videos, the action guide, uh, the bonuses, and the membership program, and that's $97. And, or, you can do part three, which has the twist test and all the programs, plus five weeks of coaching, which technically is six weeks because there's a setup week, but five weeks of coaching uh, plus the bonuses and membership, and that's $597. Also, it comes with 100% money back, a 60-day unconditional money back guarantee. You love it or you get your money back. And we believe, as many people say, this is the most powerful process they've ever gone through in their entire life. But you need to act now. This is a limited offer. So remember, the question is not how do I get clients. The question is, I have to do the timing on this, how do I get a flow of clients? So are you finally ready for nonstop income for your business? The kind of life you really want and you really deserve. The freedom to make a difference. If you're ready to position the bucket to catch the rainfall and you want help to do that, then come join me and so many others on this path to greater success. And cl click on, actually, uh, 
here's how you can do this. You go to fasterbuyer.com forward slash coaches, and that will take you through a detailed description of how this works and how you can sign up for this. Also, if you, once we're done with this, if you refresh the page, this will, uh, a, a link will come up just below this that you can click on it and then uh, sign up for that. So I hope this was really helpful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to take uh, we're going to take a Q and A from anyone who's on the call. And the way you do Q and A is this: we're not going to do it on this because it doesn't allow you to do Q and A live. And I want to do Q and A live so I get to hear people and actually hear the kind of questions you guys are asking. So we have a Q and A call number right below this presentation. You should see it there, and it's. Uh, should be 559-726-1300, and then it has the access code there, 971407, uh, pound sign. And it, then raise your hand when you want to ask a question with star six, and it should explain it right below this. So if you call that right now, if you call that right now, then I'll be able to answer your questions. I hope this was helpful for you so far. This is really so profound. We've had such amazing results with people. It's just fantastic. And by going through this process at a very minimal, so you don't have to pay this high coaching fee, at a very minimal uh, price, you can, in a very short period of time, have tremendous results for your business. Uh, so I'm James I. Bond, and I'll speak to you on the other side, on the Q&A side. Uh, speak to you just in a, about 20 seconds. Okay, so just let, let's do this. This is being recorded. So if somebody is asking a question and doesn't want to be recorded, then don't ask a question, all right? Um, so the question is, for CPAs and accountants, they were resistant, and how did I overcome the resistance? Correct? Is that mm -hmm. what you're asking? Yes, uh-huh. So what we did was we created a, a training process that they could share with their clients. And at the end of the training process was um, uh, an ad for us, very similar to what we're doing here. <clears throat> so what we did was we provided legitimate content to help their clients. And what we said was, look, um, obviously you, you, know, you still have to explain who you are and have credibility from that standpoint. You know, so, mm -hmm. But what we did was we said, um, we understand, we acknowledged their resistance. And, there was, and we said, there's good reason for you to have resistance, and we understand this. But we, what we did was obviously use some of our credentials. We had some, like, some success, so we talked about that. But we said, we have a, a little presentation that for your clients we think can be tremendous, and we did a sales job to them uh, explaining how uh, much benefit there was to them that if their clients became more successful, they would become more successful. But we acknowledge that the big problem that most accountants have, let's talk about accountants because they're more resistant than attorneys, but the big problem that accountants have is that uh, you, know, you don't want to recommend somebody because if it ends up not being a good recommendation, then it's going to reflect badly on you. Mm -hmm. So what we do instead is we, we found it's a really easy way to, to introduce the, what we offer to clients by giving them some real value. So we have this video and, why don't, and it's easier today than it was <clears throat> when we started. It was much more complicated and more expensive. Today you can produce mm -hmm. a video really easily or a teleseminar as I just did or a webinar. Mm -hmm. um, but we produced that, and at the end of it we said, by the way, if you want more, uh, we had them sign up for it, so we got their email address and contact information. And uh, we had them just do the, um, uh, you know, give the link to their clients. Mm -hmm. And we did the link with the, so, the, so they were, it, if they like the video and they love the video, this is where we talked about, you know, we, 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 uh, we showed them the video and they liked the video, they were willing to recommend the video, just not us. You get it? Uh-huh, so, yeah. And then we let the video sell us, and then, you know, uh -huh. obviously we captured the contact information. So what we said was, would you be willing to share this with your clients, and we'll tell you why uh, more and more CPAs are sharing this with your clients. First, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to... Uh, recommend us because you don't want to get yourself in trouble, so all you're doing mm -hmm. is recommending the video. And we got them to recommend mm -hmm. the video, and that just made mm -hmm. life easy. Does that, does uh -huh. that oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, that does, that does, yeah. Great, yeah. And because, Thanks again, so much. Okay, you're mm -hmm. very welcome. Yeah. Do we have another one? Okay.
All right, so I guess that's it on the call. Anybody else out there that has a question? No, no, no. Okay, so I guess mm -hmm. we're... So I'm going to end the Q&A call now. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks okay. so much. Thanks for okay, your time. It was great. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.